Discover unbeatable deals and convenience at your neighborhood Family Fair supermarkets. Score exclusive deals, earn rewards, join clubs, and clip digital coupons for extra savings all in one place. Our exclusive offers bring savings straight to your card. Explore a wide range of local products that support your community. With easy pickup and delivery options, saving time and grocery shopping has never been easier. Family Fair is all about making your grocery experience easy and affordable and your one-stop shop for all your grocery needs. Family Fair, in your neighborhood. Judy was boring. Hello. Then Judy discovered Jumbacasino.com. It's my little escape. Now Judy's the life of the party. Oh, baby, mama's bringing home the bacon. Whoa, take it easy, Judy. The Chumba life is for everybody. So go to Chumbacasino.com and play over 100 casino-style games. Join today and play for free for your chance to redeem some serious prizes. Chumbacasino.com. No purchase necessary. Void were prohibited by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details. Come in. Welcome. I'm E.G. Marshall. Welcome aboard. I say aboard because this is a train, a train of thoughts, all the dark and demoniacal thoughts that are as old as the beginnings of the human race. If, as the poet said, no man is an island, then is it really true that each member of the human race is somehow interconnected? Does an infinite network of psychic wires actually exist? Or is it possible they have been short-circuited? If we were merely machines, this proposition could be tested. But we are not merely machines. Or are we? Your whole career can be down the drain. Let it go. But there are people who worked for you, sacrificed for you, supported you. I didn't ask them. But think of the country. You were an important man, a, a valuable man. There are other men just as good, better. But all this for a, a woman? Put it any way you like. But you don't even know if she exists. I know. How do you know? Have you seen her? Have you spoken to her? I tell you I know. How? I hear her in my heart so clearly, so distinctly. I hear her right now. Can't you? I can't hear a thing. It's a pity. She's saying... She loves me. Marvin, I'm sorry for you. Oh, no. I'm the one who's sorry for you. Our mystery drama, Must Hope Perish, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Sam Dan and stars Hugh Marlowe. It is sponsored in part by Uncle Ben's Long Grain and Wild Rice and Buick Motor Division. I'll be back shortly with Act One. His name is Marvin Hale Prentice. He is a United States Senator. Both his friends and his opponents call him middle-of-the-road Marvin. His friends say that Marvin has a unique ability to see all sides of an issue. His foes insist that Marvin is just too slick to be pinned down. However, just recently, Senator Marvin Hale Prentice has taken a stand, a definite, unqualified stand. It has to do with opening trade relations with the People's Republic of Doriage. The senator is against it. Till now, Marvin Hale Prentice has been a rather obscure senator from one of the less populous states. But now he is quoted in the papers, profiled in the magazines, talked about on the news broadcasts. Right now, he is the guest on Meet the Country. At this hour in our nation's history... Our thoughts should be directed towards those principles that led to the creation of our own republic. And what are they? Liberty and justice. How then can we strengthen the hand of a tyrannical dictatorship that withholds liberty and denies...
denies justice to its own people. Oh, let me turn it down, will you, Marvin? There is one person, one person who must be heard from. Marv, do we have let to me listen? Tell you about this person. Come on, Marvin, kill the sound. Uh. The spirit of a people cannot be stepped upon. Uh, There. That's better. You know, Marv, you do look good on TV. (laughs) Did the bug bite you? Which bug? Oh, which bug indeed. Let's call it Buggers Presidentialis. Oh, come on, Papa. Now you look at your colleagues, some of them who plan to run, and you say, if it can happen to them, why not me? Nothing could be further from my mind. You're talking to old Pop here. I've seen you fellas come and go for over 50 years. (laughs) One day you look in the mirror and you say, why not me? Pop, I've never even given it a thought. why not you, Marv? All you need is a few breaks, maybe a good issue... And you're riding one right now. This is a matter of conscience. That makes it even better. You are the most completely cynical man in Washington. Would you believe it in some circles I'm considered an idealist? I remember when we were taping this broadcast. Right about here, I say something I'd like you to listen to. Turn up the volume. I'm about to quote someone. Oh, I hope it's Shakespeare. Oh, come on, please. I say this because Shakespeare's safe and acceptable. This is important. There's one person called V.K. Creston, whom I quote in just a minute. Oh, where do you dig these characters up? I want you to listen to the words of V.K. Creston. Okay, okay. Who is V.K. Creston? Nobody knows. Oh, that's right. In Doriage and all these dictatorships, people must write in secret. They can't be known. They won't be published. What they write is just passed around from hand to hand on typewritten pieces of paper. Now turn it up. Uh, I'm quoting uh, V.K. Creston. All right, all right. right. An unknown native of Doriage reaches out to us. V.K. Creston, who writes, Millions reach out as if from the darkness of the grave. Here we are the prisoners of practicality. Poetry. Only in poetry is brotherhood mentioned now. And if there be no poetry, we die. Must hope perish. That's it. Shut the set. Well, that's beyond me. I... I feel I know this V.K. Creston. Marvin, are you all right? Sure, sure, it sounds crazy. But those words... Okay, what are they? The desperate cry of someone who is even too powerless to fight for freedom. You know, you've been working too hard. V.K. Creston is speaking to me. To me directly. All right, all right, Marvin. I'm only asking how we we establish this. That's all. He and I know each other. There's a bond between us, a, a mysterious bond. I, I knew it when I read the first poem in a little book that was smuggled out of the country. It was addressed to me. You mean your name was on it? No, my name was in it. Show me. What I mean is my initials are in it. <laughs> Now you just lost me. Marvin Hale Prentice, M.H.P. In the poetry, all of Creston's writings, the first line always starts with a word that begins with an M. The second line starts with a word that begins with an H. And the third with a P. Well, that could be a... That could be what? Coincidence? Remember what I just quoted over the TV show. The first line begins. Millions reach out. There's your M. Second line. Here we are prisoners. And the third line, poetry, only in poetry is, there's the P. And the final three-word sentence, must hope perish. M.H.P., Marvin Hale premise. Well? Well, (laughs) what do you want me to tell you? Now, do you know why I feel B.K. Creston's reaching out to me? One man's thoughts reaching out across thousands of miles and touching my own... That's why I'm fighting this trade bill. It's for V.K. Creston. Marvin, I don't think you should mention it that way to another living soul. This whole business, if the if the papers caught on to Oh, it, Pop, why don't you just once quit being the wise old man of politics and tell me what you really think? Oh, I don't know. Thought transference, extrasensory perception, we tend to laugh at all that stuff. But... Who's really got the answer? Oh, excuse me, Pop. 
Hello? Marvin? Oh, yes, dear. Marvin, you didn't come to see me this afternoon? I know, dear. But you promised, Marvin. You promised. I... I'll be out tomorrow. Why weren't you here today? They... They were mean to me again. I'm sorry, darling. I'll talk to them about it. I was digging in the garden, and I found an Indian arrowhead. Oh, that's wonderful. Do you know the man I was telling you about? Oh, now, dearest, there's no such person. Oh, that's what you say. But there isn't. You take everyone's part but mine. He was staring at me through the garden gate. You come out here tomorrow, and do you catch him for me? Promise. I promise. You never keep any of your promises. I never want to see you again. Dolly, Dolly. Well, how is she? She's not getting any better. It's going to be a problem for you, Mom. Oh, stop looking at everything from a political point of view. Oh, it's just bad luck. You and Dolly had agreed to a parting before, before this thing came over. But you divorce her now, and there isn't a woman in the country who would vote for you. Papa, I have no intention okay, to... Okay, I won't say another word. Good. And as a reward, I'll buy you dinner tonight. <laughs> Not a chance. My old lady'd shoot me if I make her spend another night alone. Why don't you come home with me? No, no, I... I've got some work to do. Marv, you're not the kind of guy who can be alone too much. You need someone. Pop, did you ever think of writing an advice to the Lovelorn column? Well, I'd write a damn good one. <laughs> Anyhow, Marv, you be careful. Of what? Of everything. You're becoming a hot property. This B.K. Creston, why do I feel that I know him so well? I haven't the faintest idea who B.K. Creston could be. Marv, the, uh, the party is going to decide to approve the trade bill. You know that. That won't change my mind. Marvin, you mustn't ever take politics seriously. It'll break your heart. <laughs> Major Turner, what have you to report? Nothing at this time, Your Excellency. The trade bill? There is a certain Senator Prentice. Yes, I know. Why is he so opposed to the bill? It seems he's made it a personal crusade. But the administration is in favor. Doesn't he submit to party discipline? They have strange customs in America. The representatives are permitted to vote as they please. But what does he have against the bill? I suppose he's been infected by the writings of this V.K. Creston. Yes, I'm aware of that. Who is V.K. Creston? We don't know. What do you mean you don't know, Major? We have no idea. That's ridiculous. V.K. Creston is obviously a nom de plume. Yes, of course. But we're familiar with the styles and techniques of most of our writers. We should be able to tell who V.K. Creston is. Now, what you say, Your Excellency, is true, but... Obviously, V.K. Creston is a new and unknown writer. Even so, the fellow will have to give himself away. He's been extremely cautious. How badly are we being hurt by this Senator Prentice? Well, Excellency, he's an attractive man, and he has a popular issue. What do we have on him? Nothing. Nothing? You say he's attractive. No scandal? We haven't been able to find any. No women? He's married, but his wife has been institutionalized. A severe nervous breakdown. Ah. How long has she been away? Six months. No one knows when or if she'll be cured. And he's an attractive man. Let's file that fact for the future. Marvin, the party isn't trying to put any pressure on you. But most people agree the trade bill is a good thing. Do they? Well, on balance, there's a lot to be said for and against. But from a practical, realistic standpoint... I know all those arguments, Pop. 
But I want you to listen to this. Oh, are you going to quote me something by your friend V.K. Preston? Preston. Okay. Make a vow to me. Hold my trembling hand. Pray we'll all be free. It's the first three lines of a poem. The first word, first line, begins with M. The first word in the second line begins with H. Third line, P. And here's the very last line of the poem. Three words. The same three words. Must hope perish. This is a message. It's meant for me. Marv, now you've always been steady, reliable, sensible. Don't start getting cookie. You know, you know what I mean. I can't help it. And I know how that must sound. The trouble that you've had with Dolly. She's been a severe strain on both of you. She cracked up in a visible manner, whereas you... Yes, whereas I... were off on this psychic communication kick. There is a psychic communication between us, between B.K. Creston and me. Do you know what the hometown papers would make out of that? You can say whatever you like, but I have this feeling, and I don't know where it comes from, that I'm going to meet B.K. Creston not too long from now. <laughs> Celeste speaking. Who? That's impossible. If I were to interview every peasant woman who wandered in here, we'll throw her out. You can't go in. Come back. 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 Come all I have to say is I know where you can pick up this V.K. Creston. And when I come back for the reward... What name? What name did you just say? Creston. You know where we can find Creston? What do you think I'm doing here? Give me the address. I will. As soon as I'm written down for the reward. Business should always come first. <laughs> He's right, this rather uninhibited lady. Business should always come first. We, too, have a little business that must be transacted. And then we will join the police of the People's Republic of Doriage and meet the elusive, mysterious V.K. Creston. And that will happen when I return in just a few moments with Act Two. Hearts and hands across the sea. What does a revolutionary and unknown poet from a troubled Central European country have in common with a senator from a Western state? They have never met. They were never aware of each other's existence. So why should the senator become convinced that the poet was writing poetic messages specifically for him? Or could it just be the senator's imagination? Right now, the poet has trouble enough and to spare. The police are closing in. You'll get your reward. Write down my name. It's Hera Colasso. Very well. You must have heard of my husband, Tariq Colasso. He used to be a star soccer player. Yeah, and now, where can we find V.K. Crested? The reason we need the money, you see, is he broke his leg in the championships ten years ago. Well... We, uh, we had the extra room, and uh, we've been taken in borders. Yes, 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 but, but this we're... is important, because it's how we knew our latest border is this V.K. Creston. Well? Well, this one's a typist and does extra work at home. Well, you know how the inflation's killing everybody. you got to work day and night. Will you get to the point? Well, like I said, this one types, and, well, you know, they, they make mistakes, and, well, see... I, I'm emptying out the garbage cans, and I find these crumpled sheets of paper. Ah. Here, read that. Must hope perish. V.K. Creston. <sighs> it's a shame. Such a nice, quiet, pretty little girl, too. 
Can't be more than 25. A girl? Did you say B.K. Creston is a girl? Hello? Pop, it's me, Marvin. Uh, Marvin, do you know what time it is? Pop, I'm sorry I woke you, but I... I just couldn't sleep. Why, what's wrong? I... I had the strangest feeling. I... Uh, you you think I'm crazy. I think you're crazy anyhow, so what is it? Creston. Did you call me up at this hour of the night to talk about Creston? Maybe it's just a dream, but I, I'm i sure that B.K. Creston has been arrested. Yes? W- what is there we can do about it? What is there we can do about it? Marvin. That's the internal affairs of another country. Oh, come on. You've been around. You know where the wheels no, turn. No, no, There's absolutely nothing I can do. Oh, Pop, can... please try. But how do you know? All you've told me is you've had a dream. How do you know? I know, Pop. I know. Well, Citizen Creston, it's an honor to meet such a celebrated literary figure. And what do you have to say for yourself? Nothing? Ah, You have quite a bit to say, however, in this treasonous poetry that flows in such a poisonous stream from your typewriter. V.K. Creston. Valerie Catherine. Not Creston, but Staric. Oh, that struck a nerve. You thought we wouldn't be able to find out. So, what shall we do with you, Valerie, Catherine? We could have you shot or hanged or sent away to a labor camp for corrective therapy. Do your worst. Oh, she speaks. Such a beautiful voice. I'm not afraid. Yes, that's your problem. You're not afraid. If you were intelligent instead of merely talented, you'd be smart enough to be afraid, and you'd never have gotten into this scrape to begin with. I don't care what you do with me. Yes, yes, yes. Spare me, please. You're willing to die for freedom and justice. You may kill me. Yes, but my... yes, yes, I know. But but what I believe in shall endure forever. This is the romantic, revolutionary nonsense of youth. I was young once myself. A pity you live to grow older. Uh, We are willing to consider your exercises on the typewriter as childish nonsense. Then why do you fear them? You're a grown woman. And the toys of childhood must be put away, finally. And I have for you a woman's assignment. (laughs) What makes you think I would even... Only a child interrupts. You'll be sent to prison. Miraculously, you will escape. Across the border, and you will present yourself at the American consulate and ask for asylum. Well, now, don't look at me as though I were a madman. I know what I'm saying. In America, you will meet a senator named Prentice. He's quite impressed with your writings. And looking at you, I can tell that he'll be quite impressed with you. It should be easy for you to become more than just a friend. My answer is no. Oh, you do it. I'll die first. What is this talk about dying? It isn't just talk. Do you think I'm afraid? Ah, here we have this fear business again. My girl, depend on it. You'll do as you're told. Never. Well, we could stay here and bandy words all day long, but... One brief experience is worth a lifetime of discussion. Major, have the car ready. We're taking a short trip. I don't care how long you keep me here. And we don't intend to keep you here at all. Don't you want to visit your father? Father? What do you want with my father? 
My father didn't do anything. Oh, that's not true. He had a daughter. And she's giving us trouble. God! We'll wait outside. Father! Huh? What? Where is it? Oh. Oh, it's you, Valerie. Father, what? What did they... What did they say? It is what? only a mistake. I was in my laboratory and the police came. And now here I am. It is a mistake. I'm sure they will check the records. What happened to you for it? Uh, one of the police officers was young and impatient. It uh, really was my own fault. I should not have objected. How, how long have you been here? Well, I... I don't know. I was in the lab, and then I was here uh, oh, uh, a while. Hey, isn't that, that nice of them? And they let you come. How are you, my child? I'm fine. That's good, good. I hope you are not talking against the government. There is no point to it. It just arouses passions and anger. And the mind should be clear for thinking. Yes, Father. And I can think here. Just as well as any place else. Besides, I won't stay here too long. They are bound to find out it has been a mistake. And then they will let me go. Eh? I will be free. Soon. Yes, Father. You'll be free soon. Sorry I'm late. Well, uh, there's a committee meeting. We'll have to hurry through lunch. I've already ordered for you. Thanks. I, uh, I know you like to kid around with that red-headed waitress. Uh, what's her name? Caroline, and I don't kid around with her. Oh, you think you don't. Dolly's been away for months. What are you building, Pop? I haven't even thought about another woman. You've been doing nothing but think about another woman for two weeks now. By your own admission, you even dream about her. When did I ever admit that I... I can name the woman. I wish you would. V.K. Creston. V.K. Creston? Or if you prefer, Valerie Catherine Creston. V... V.K. Creston is a... Is a woman? You knew it all the time. How can you say that? Because it's true. Oh, maybe you weren't aware of it consciously. Talk about psychic communication. Oh, nothing like a little sex to clear the wires. Pop, never in my wildest imagining. Oh, sure, sure. I believe that we shouldn't have a trade bill with a country like Doriage. And the, the, the writings of a certain B.K. Crescent helped me to clarify my position. That's all. But, uh... But uh, how do you know? How, how did you find out that she was a woman? Well, you were told about it psychically a few nights ago. Oh, come on, Pop, lay off. Didn't you dream she was arrested? You you mean she was? That's right. Papa, I, I want to set up a meeting with someone at the state department. All right, relax. It's been fixed. She's escaped. She got across the border and she applied for asylum at our embassy. Where is she now? In a plane headed for Washington. Hey, where are you going? To the airport. You want to sit down, have lunch, and, and, and don't go to the airport. Why not? I've, uh, I've seen her picture. She, she's too good looking. Oh, what does that have to do the with papers? The TV cameras will be there. So what? So you're a hero to her. Suppose she throws her arms around you and, 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 and kisses you. I don't think she'll. That's right. That's why you got me. I think. Now, people know about your wife, Marvin. They see a cozy two-shot of you and a good-looking dame, and... Oh, I think that's ridiculous. It's also politics. Now, why don't we arrange for this historic confrontation in the privacy of your office? And, uh, what are your plans, Miss Creston? Oh, please. Call me Valerie Catherine. Oh, yes, of course. I... I'll need a job. Oh, yes. Well, well, would, uh... Would you like a job in my office? Oh, 
Oh, that would be wonderful. I, uh, I need someone on my research staff. Someone who knows foreign affairs. Not only my country, but I, myself, will have reason to be grateful to you, Senator. Marvin, uh, we're all very informal around here. Uh, well, uh, tell me, Valerie Catherine, were you trying to... Yes? The, the first word in each line of your poetry seems to create a pattern where it forms my initials. Here, I have one of your poems. See how it keeps forming the letters M-H-P? But uh, I never knew you. And I never knew you. So how could I... Uh... But you did. Maybe <laughs> we were looking for each other. I, I, I know I've been seeking, searching, hoping... Have you? Yes. Yes, I have. Valerie Catherine. What a lovely name. Uh-huh. I want to tell you something. I don't have to... I don't have the right to say this, but I... I love you. I, I've always loved you. Well... Okay, round two. Name something that's not boring. A laundry? Ooh, a book club! Computer solitaire, huh? Ah, oh, sorry. We were looking for Chumba Casino. That's right. Chumbacasino.com has over 100 casino-style games. Join today and play for free for your chance to redeem some serious prizes. Chumbacasino.com. No purchase necessary. Full work limited by law. 18 plus. Terms and conditions apply. See website for details. I've always loved you. I don't understand it. I, I don't know how it came about. And I don't want to know. Hello? Good evening. Are you alone? Who... Who is this? You know who this is. Celeste. What do you want? I've had myself transferred to our embassy here. I want to keep an eye on you. So far, so good. I don't know what you're talking about. You work in his office. You have your own apartment. He visits you regularly. Please, leave me alone. What does that mean? Uh, he, he's a wonderful human being, and and I love him. Ah, that should make your job easier. What job? What am I supposed to be doing? Exactly what you're doing now. <laughs> Marvin, you're seeing too much of that girl. It's my own affair. You see? Subconsciously, you use the right word. Affair. Pop, we're in love. You are also a married man. <sighs> Dolly and I haven't lived together for years. We're very much in love with Dolly. You still are. I, I'm not. It's over. You've missed her. I don't want to discuss it. Man has a right to his privacy. Oh, you've been discreet so far. You haven't been seen in public. But you know the reporters in this town. Nothing escapes them for too long. Yes, I know. Dolly went off the deep end because she couldn't get used to the idea of your importance. And the demands on your time. I don't want to talk about Dolly. Well, do you want a woman you can hide somewhere and visit just as your schedule permits? You don't know how far off base you are, Pop. I need this girl. Marv, I wouldn't care if you were just another politician. But you're not. You could go all the way. Now, don't throw away the main chance. Don't give up everything because... Well, I guess that's how you know you're in love. I am willing to give up everything. Everything. In poetry, it's all very well to say the world is well lost for love. But is it? Men have given up all the world for love. And that's usually the last we know about them. Have they regretted it? Who knows? If we are unable to feel another's pain, how can we hope to partake in his delight? Senator Prentiss will or will not give up the world... When I return in just a few moments, 
with Act Three. His name is Marvin Hale Prentice. She is Valerie Christen. Until a few months ago, neither was aware of the other. How could they be? She was an underground poet in a Central European dictatorship. He, a United States senator. And yet, it seemed as if every thought in her mind was directed at him. How? Why? Does it matter? Right now, they're very much aware of each other. Very much attracted to each other. And if the situation is fraught with peril, as some people might put it, well, love laughs at tomorrow. After all, love always burns brightest today. I want to know everything about you. Oh, no, no. My life has been dull compared to yours. No. I see what you do on your job. It's exciting. It's safe. It has no real challenges. You live with danger every day. Ah, I don't recommend it, Marvin. Mm. To risk arrest every day, to fight against odds. Please, you, you mustn't make a heroine out of me. But you are. You're the most, the most exciting woman I've ever met. But you do have a wife. Yes, Dolly. I knew about you before we met. Did, did you know about me? I must have known about you. There was a name somewhere in my mind. I didn't know the name, but it was there. It must have been there. Just as so many thoughts remain just beyond the edge of our understanding. But, but this name struggled to reveal itself to me. And... And the initials came forth. What's to become of us? Oh, I have yet to learn how to live with thoughts of tomorrow. We'll have a tomorrow. I I intend to divorce my wife, marry you, and retire from public oh, life. Oh, no, oh, no. Why not? I can't let you give up everything for me. What am I giving up? All I want is you. Perhaps, perhaps we shouldn't see each other again. What, what, what are you saying? I... I can't understand why. You know, you're the strangest girl I ever met. Everything about us. It's so hard to understand. And yet, it's so simple. I only know that I love you. Do you love me? Yes. But... Once you say yes, you don't have to say but. Hello? Marvin. What is it, Pop? I, uh, I have to see you. Why? Well, I'd, uh, I'd rather not say on the phone. Will you be there for half an hour? No, I have to go see Dolly. Dolly? Yes, I... I want to see if I can get through to her. See if I can make her understand that the two of us are finished. No, Marvin, don't do anything just yet. Now, look, Pop, I think I know my own business. There's something you should know about... about about Valerie. I know everything I want to know about her. This could change your attitude. Nothing could ever change my attitude. Why not hear me out? And it's none of your business. And why not listen and judge? I'll be home at five this afternoon. How are you, Dolly? Oh, I have a way to go yet. But I finally stopped fighting it. What were you fighting? Oh, you know, it's a terrible thing to be a great man's wife. There's so little in it for a woman. Well, I'm not a great man. Oh, but you will be in the next few years. I always felt it. I saw it coming before you did. I didn't want to give you up to the world. Oh, the doctors may have long and involved names for it, but... What, what I was doing was having tantrums. Now, Dolly, uh, it's not that simple... Why isn't it? Of course, if we'd had children... I'm glad you feel this way, Dolly, because I came here to tell you... You came here to tell me you love me. I know. But I... You don't have to say any more. What you just said is all I need. I'm not out of the woods yet. I have good days and bad. <laughs> this is one of my better days. Tomorrow might be a disaster. 
Dolly, listen. There isn't all that much to say. With your help, darling, the bad days will become fewer and fewer. And soon they'll be gone for good. Dolly. I can't make it back without you. I just can't. I need you, darling. Tell me you love me. Tell me. I've been asking some questions along the line. Now, Valerie's father is Dr. Royal Starrick, the agricultural scientist. I know that. Right after Valerie was arrested, he was arrested. So? And right after Valerie <laughs> escaped, he was released. All right. What else? Why is Valerie here? Because she escaped from prison. Do you know that in the entire history of the present Doriage government, not one single solitary prisoner ever escaped from their jails? What are you driving at? A deal. They say to her, we let it appear that you escaped. Go after Senator Prentice. Oh, that's crazy. But of course she doesn't want to do it. I'll say that for her. But they say... Do it, or it's Papa who pays. The girl has no choice. But she loves me. That doesn't matter. They're spinning a web around you. Can't you see it? I refuse to believe it. You refuse to face it. Hey, where are you going? Marvin! Marvin! Come back here! That's what I agreed to do, but... But when I met you, everything was different. I... I... You what? I fell in love with you. Do you expect me to believe it? Yes, if you love me. How... How could you do this to me? I tried to help your country. I believe in what your people are fighting for. I believe it's my fight, too. How could you betray me? I'm... I'm human... It meant saving my father. And when I met you, I, I, I fell in love with you. But I've... I've taken care of everything. I, I could be ruined. Everything is taken care of. What's... What's wrong with you? Why are you so pale? Because I've taken care of everything. What does that mean? It means nothing. Who are you? I am Celeste. I'm with the Doriage Embassy. Let me show you why you will not vote against the trade bill. Just a minute. Photos of you entering this building and leaving. Photos of you and Miss V.K. Creston here in this room. There's nothing personal in this, believe me. I'm prepared to hand these photos to you or to the press. Tell me my course of action. The choice is yours. No, the choice is mine. I don't think you have anything to say. And I have chosen. You're a fool. You know what will happen to your father. My father is dead. I learned this from the underground. Valerie, don't. W where'd you get that gun? You can't just shoot him. I told you. I would take care of everything. Valerie, don't. What? That's for me. Ah. And that's ah. for my father. <laughs> Bowery, you... They, Take the papers. They will arrest the you. pictures. Leave here, quickly. No, no, I'm staying with you. You can't, because... Because I won't... I won't be here. I'll be gone. Bowery. It's a... A little pill. All of us in the underground carry one, and it works... Quickly. Pleasantly. Uh, uh, I'll call a doctor. No, no, it's too late. And it... It was the only way. I I said I'd fix everything. Oh, darling, lie quietly. Lie. Maybe, no, maybe I can no, still no. call. Go, go, talk to me. Tell me. Answer me. Must hope perish. Must hope perish. No, my darling. No. It was a sensation. 
the great underground poet of the oppressed country who killed the hated minister of justice and then took her own life. The senator? Oh, we may yet hear from him on the national scene, especially since his attractive wife is such a campaign asset. I'll be back in just a moment. Must Hope Perish Never, never as long as there are those who dare to speak and those who are brave enough to listen. And every minute of the day, there are voices, silent voices, calling for help. And sometimes, if we listen closely, we can hear them. Our cast included Hugh Marlowe, Marion Seldes, Ian Martin, E.V. Juster, and Robert Dryden. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. And now, a preview of our next tale. Sergeant Clifton. Oh, Sergeant, I know you people are very busy, and this is probably nothing. Well, let me judge that, Doctor. Well, I mean, on the face of it, I, I wouldn't even think that there's any significance. Well, you must have some reason for calling me. Well, you remember, Sergeant, when you were in the hospital and we were listening to the poor old Russian lady... She's no better, I'm afraid. I'm sorry to hear that. Well, I remember we were saying how things were interrelated. Yes? And that Miss Brody had been in here a week before she died and was killed because of a severe skin irritation. Yes, I remember. Well, she has a roommate, uh, Miss Dora Hastings. Miss Hastings is here now with the same skin irritation. But does it mean anything? I mean, from a police point of view or... Am I wasting your time? I'll be right there. Radio Mystery Theater was sponsored in part by Buick Motor Division and Uncle Ben's Long Grain and Wild Rice. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams. Judy was boring. Hello. Then Judy discovered Jumbacasino.com. It's my little escape. Now Judy's the life of the party. Oh, baby, mama's bringing home the bacon. Whoa, take it easy, Judy. The Chumba life is for everybody. So go to Chumbacasino.com and play over 100 casino-style games. Join today and play for free for your chance to redeem some serious prizes. Chumbacasino.com. No purchase necessary. Void were prohibited by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details. Go Ford for your next truck or SUV and find an easier way to buy with Woodhouse Ford today and experience the convenience of buying with Woodhouse Ford. Lease a 2023 Ford Escape Active for $397 per month for 48 months and 7,500 miles per year. First payment and $299 dock fee due at signing. Security deposit waived. Tax title license extra with approved credit. Expires 1204-2023.